Hey guys, it's Saturday night. We're live. Tonight's Q&A session will be about um, different things that cause your weight loss to stall and how to prevent them. I posted a video on YouTube earlier today that had a lot of this information in it, but we're going to go through it tonight on the live discussion. And I'm also going to answer any questions that anybody has that have come up during the week. So I'm just waiting. Y'all, I've got a stain on my shirt. Look at that. Lord have mercy. Wearing my pearls today in honor of Babs. That's what the pearls are about. Miss Barbara Bush, she was a great role model for all of us to look up to. And one of the last first ladies that I truly respected. So you guys, I'm just going to hold out here and wait on y'all for a few minutes. I'm sharing to my timeline into the group, so maybe everybody will get on over. So it's been a good day. Today's been a, a busy day. Got a lot done today. Got to go out with Hannah for breakfast this morning and enjoy some breakfast and get her to work and went by the grocery store and bought all my food for my food prep this week. What have you guys been up to? Holding on here. I'm just waiting. I usually have two or three on by now. It's 8.03. I'm still not seeing anybody on here. Alright guys, I'm going to go ahead and just start talking about the things I was going to cover tonight. It'll be pretty short without any discussion with nobody being on here because um, I don't have any questions from anybody or anybody asking me questions or discussing anything. So it'll just be me blabbing. Alright, so when you're on a weight loss journey, like most of us are, there's a lot of things out there that can cause your weight loss to stall or stop. One of the biggest ones, stress. Um, we all have stressors every day, good stress, bad stress. Um, in the past few years, I've had two of my daughters get married. I've had them graduate. You know, I mean, all of those things are good stress, but it still causes stress. It causes a cortisol response in your body because your brain has no clue if the stress that you're under is good stress or bad stress. It just knows that there's something going on that's out of the ordinary. Now, chronic stress, which 
a lot of people go through without even realizing it will cause a weight stall or even a gain at times because what happens is there is a chemical cascade that happens in your body whenever you're um, whenever you experience stress yesterday I experienced one of the worst stressors that I could have ever had um, yesterday I actually was involved in a car accident on I-85 down by Atlanta my car came out of it fine I came out of it fine I'm a little bit sore my left shoulder is a little sore from the seat belt but not a scratch on my car miraculously the Lord just put a umbrella of protection over me but you want to talk about a stressor now um, the car to the left of me whipped across in front of me and t-boned the truck that was beside me spun him out she spun out it was just crazy there was a tractor trailer behind me thank the Lord he was able to stop but it it was a stressor and as deep into ketosis as I am I know for a fact hi Chelsea I know for a fact that I wasn't losing any weight yesterday. I wasn't burning any fat because my body was going through this huge stress. And when that happens, this hormone cascade happens. First, your body experiences adrenaline. There's a big adrenaline dump. And it puts you into what's called a fight or flight mode. And so what happens is your brain doesn't know is this good stress, bad stress, life or death stress? So it literally shuts down everything in your body that is not necessary at that time. That means hair growth, nail growth, skin rebuilding, wound healing, any of those things. And in relation to weight loss, you're talking about digestion. And in the digestive tract, in the GI tract, all motility just slows way down because your body believes that there is something that is more important that needs to be taken care of and so it stops everything it stops everything that's not completely necessary so you've got this adrenaline dump now when that adrenaline dumps and all this stuff starts to happen well then you have a cortisol rush your body releases cortisol your adrenal glands release cortisol hi Candace how are you honey um, so when your body releases cortisol, cortisol rises. It is your stress hormone. And when cortisol rises, insulin rises. Now I have taught many um, lives and told y'all about how an insulin response will keep you from losing weight. Well, when that cortisol is dumped due to the stress, then your insulin goes up. And when your insulin goes up, then everything, all the fat burning stops. Now, cortisol, it will trigger hunger. And in particular, it triggers sweets and salt hunger. Because what happens is your body thinks we have got to get as much in as possible to fix whatever's about to happen. And because most times, most people, your brain functions off of sugar and the rest of your body relies on your electrolytes. Chelsea, you actually jumped in right at the right time. I was just starting to tell my story. <laughs> so what happens is the, uh, the cortisol dumps, and so you start getting hungry. You start craving these sweets and these uh, salty foods. Well, even when you're keto, even when you've been on a ketogenic lifestyle, yesterday, y'all, after that, near miss car accident when I literally almost died I could have eat an entire donut shop no joke I wanted something sweet so bad I could not stand myself and I had to go to Scottish Rite and um, take care of my patient in fact the wonderful police officers down there I, I give them all the credit in the world when I told them what had happened and where I was headed and everything and they checked me out and made sure that I was okay they then escorted me on into Scottish Rite and got me there so that I get there in time to meet my patient he was on medical transport and it was wonderful but there wasn't any bacon 
going to satisfy me right then and there. Now, I did not cheat. I'm very proud of myself for that because Scottish Rite has an excellent cafeteria downstairs. But I did not. But I wanted to because when my body went into that fight or flight response and I started having these cravings from the cortisol, that's all I wanted was something sweet and something salty, period. Now, that happens to everybody. Now, <coughs> cortisol triggers your fat cells, your existing fat cells, to open up. They have these little, um, what would you call them? Uh, they're like little tails, okay? That's how I'm going to put it. It's like little puzzle pieces. In your body, everything in there has little puzzle pieces, and they all fit together. And so when one, um, I know there's a name for it, and I probably should have known it before I, or at least had it on my mind. Um, anyways, when you have that response, cortisol triggers your fat cells to open up these these pathways so that all the fat, all the salt, all the sugar, everything can be stored as quickly as possible so that your body is taking care of itself. Fight or flight. And guess what happens? Everything heads to the fat cells. Everything. Right then and there. And that is how, that is why, it's how and why, when you're extremely stressed, you end up with that abdominal fat, belly fat. If y'all remember a few years ago, there was a pill that came out. It was in a little blue bottle. They called it the belly fat pill. It was supposed to help get rid of cortisol. It's supposed to lower your cortisol levels. Well, the reason why is because visceral fat, visceral meaning surrounding your organs or in your abdominal area, that is the most dangerous fat you can have because that fat will hold on to everything and it's very hard to get rid of, which a lot of us are learning right now. Um, when those pathways open and we store that fat, what happens then is fatty acids from those pathways are released into the blood. Those fatty acids go into your blood and it causes higher cholesterol, it causes the tea tiny cholesterol, the bad ones that we don't want. We want that big fat cholesterol. That's what we want in our in our system and that's okay. And that's okay when you go get your cholesterol checked. If that's if that's higher, that's all right. It there's a great video on YouTube right now by Dr. Ken Berry. I know y'all get tired of me hearing hearing me talk about him. But it's a great video by Dr. Ken Berry that he just released in the last week or so. That hey Brittany, how are you doing, hun? Um, that he just released. That's talking about help. My cholesterol went up on keto. I want y'all to watch that because he explains so well what actually happens in the system with cholesterol levels and what you need to worry about and what you don't. So, okay, so these fatty acids have now been released into your, into your blood and your stomach is storing fat and everything's holding on. Well, what ends up happening, y'all, is it affects the hormones that control your hunger. The first one being ghrelin. Ghrelin is your hunger hormone. And ghrelin is the one that tells you, hey, hey, you're hungry. You need to eat. That's the one that, not your stomach growling now, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about when you really know up here, I'm hungry. Then there's leptin. Leptin is extremely important in your body because leptin is your feel full hormone. It's the one that tells you, hey Jennifer, it's the one that tells you, hey, you've had enough. Well, when you get those fatty acids in your blood, you're, you can become leptin resistant. And it's just like being insulin resistant, y'all. With leptin resistancy, you do not know when you're full and therefore you overeat. So when you overeat, whether it be carbs, sugar, fats, and yes, you can overeat fats, or protein. And now we've talked a lot about protein and overeating protein and how it can turn around and be turned into fat 
through gluconeogenesis. So it causes you to overeat. Now, guess what else happens? And ladies, your testosterone drops. And yes, we have testosterone too. That's where our little facial hairs and all that stuff comes from. And your muscle development. Everybody in the world has testosterone. Men just have a higher level of testosterone than women do, which is why it's so much easier for them to build muscle and get ripped. And I, I heard somebody on a um, podcast this week say yoked. <laughs> They're getting yoked. Well, I don't ever want to be yoked. But I would like to tone up a little bit, which is why I've decided to start um, walking and start doing a little bit of fitness for myself. Hey, Deborah. <clears throat> so, over time, if your testosterone levels have dropped due to this chronic stress, what it can do is it can cause your muscles to start to, you lose muscle mass. And that... That's not good, y'all, because when you lose muscle mass, then your metabolism drops. Because the more muscle you have, the higher your metabolism is, okay? So what can we do? What can we do in our lives besides eating good? Does anybody know? Can you name one thing, anybody that's on right now, can you name one thing that you can do to lower stress in your life besides eating good? Besides your nutrition. No responses. All right, then. I'll talk about it. <laughs> All right. Number one. Number one. Exercise. Y'all, I'm not talking about going to the gym and spending hours and lifting lots of weights. and You know, I'm not talking about being becoming a gym rat or anything like that. I'm just talking about moderate exercise. Get out and walk. You know, try to, to try to get a walk in a day or just stay active. Most of us, dependent, well, most of us, nurses, and nurses are crazy active, y'all, when we're at work, really, because we're back and forth to the, you know, the hospital rooms and that kind of thing. But the majority of the shift is spent. Yep, you're right. Maybe I'm lagging. <laughs> Maybe I'm lagging. But the majority of our time is spent sitting at a desk charting. Or on the phone with a doctor, or on the phone with x-ray and radiology, or on the phone with the ER, something, okay? And those that have desk jobs, that work in insurance, or work in the bank, all of you guys. You know, you feel super active during the day, but the truth is, is you're actually very, very sedentary. Almost everybody is. And when we come home in the evenings, do we want to go do something? At no. We want to come home and sit down on the couch watch some TV, take a shower, eat us some dinner, and go to bed. That's what we want to do. So what my suggestions are, set your alarm clock on your phone. Just set your phone. Um, I'm tapping my watch to say in my phone, y'all. I hmm, think I'm going to need, be needing some more MCT oil tomorrow. My MCT oil came in the mail today. But... <laughs> On your phone, set an alarm that goes off every hour. When that goes off, I'm not telling you to go outside and walk a mile, okay? But get up. Get up and move. Even if it's just to walk around the office for a moment or walk to the bathroom, wash your hands, and walk, walk back to your station. Something. Get up and move every hour. That just helps your body to keep that metabolism going. It helps the motility in your GI tract and it helps your brain. All right. It also, when you, you know, just walking to the bathroom and such isn't going to do this, but getting out and walking, I've noticed this week and I used to be super active. I used to be an athlete y'all and I am working on getting that way again. My friend Susie Flaherty, she, um, she has told me for the last couple of years, Melissa, you have always been an athlete. It's in there. You're going to get there. And she's right. It is. I just have to find it again. So y'all have probably seen on the page because I've been posting it. Um, July 7th, I'm going to be doing the two-mile Lake Burton Fun Run. I would love to see a bunch of you guys out there too. And um, maybe there might be t-shirts involved or something of that nature. Don't know yet. 
thinking about it. Depends on how many people want to be want to participate and represent the Sassy Keto Nurse. But if none, then it'd just be me. But that's okay too. Also, I just signed up today. Me and Hannah signed up today for a 5K that we're going to do over at my sister's um, development where she lives in Pinehurst, North Carolina. And they're doing a 5K color run. And if y'all have never done a color run or any of these fun runs, y'all get out there and do one. I, it's not like I'm going to run for 5K, which is 3.3 miles. Um, I haven't done that in many, many moons. And between now and June 30th, I doubt very seriously if I'm going to be able to get to where I can run three, almost three and a half miles. But it's the fun, y'all. It's the, it's the commitment. It's telling yourself, I'm going to do this and getting out there and doing it. For the most part, I'll probably walk most of it. But I will enjoy myself. And these color runs are awesome because you wear like white. Or you can, you can wear a costume. A bunch of people do. But you wear white, and at every kilometer, there's people there, and they throw chalk at you. <laughs> I know, doesn't that sound fun? It is, though. It's a lot of fun. And by the time you get to the end, I mean, you're just covered in all different colors. You look like a big rainbow, and you're laughing, and you're cutting up, and you've met lots of new friends, and you meet all these people on the course, and then afterwards, there's always an after party with great music and free giveaways and all kinds of good stuff. Plus... Guess what all that did for you? All that feel-good stuff? It's because of the endorphins and the dopamine that are released from your brain when you have these feel-good hormones released. Y'all, that's the opposite of stress, and that's what we're working for. We want to get away from the stress and move towards those endorphins and dopamine releases. So the other thing you can do when you're at work or in your car, if you're on a long drive or you're on the airplane or those kind of things, I know a lot of my um, friends do a lot of traveling, fidget. If you can't get up and walk and you can't get up and move around a little bit, fidget. Tap your feet, wiggle your toes, wiggle your legs around. I mean, right now I'm sitting here wiggling my legs. Don't I look silly? But I'm doing it. You know, do your hands back and forth. Whatever. Just something to keep the blood moving, okay? Second thing that I recommend to help get rid of stress is your mindset. Y'all, it took me a long time. I've been doing this for almost nine months now. And for the first probably five months of it, it was all about weight loss. That's all I cared about. And every day it was checking the scale. And if the scale didn't drop, then I was disappointed in myself. Because I was eating right. I knew I was eating right. I was sticking to that keto plan like no nobody's business. So if I didn't lose weight or, Lord forbid, I gained a pound or two in a day, y'all, I was just all over myself. And in December, it got really bad. I got really bad about it because I was like, why am I not losing weight? I'm doing everything right. Well, the truth is, is that I had the wrong mindset, y'all. Coming into this with keto, it should not just be about weight loss. Weight loss is wonderful. Weight loss, I know, is your goal. But your overall mindset should be aimed at your, your health. Getting your health to an optimal place to where then you can function better. Your brain functions better and all of those good things. So what happens is... About three months ago, right when I started all this, the Sassy Keto group and everything, was when I changed my mindset. And I realized, hmm, the weight loss is a side effect. All this other stuff is what I needed. You know, yes, I, I definitely needed to lose weight. I was morbidly obese. I was over 300 pounds, y'all. But more than the weight loss, I needed to find my self-love again. I needed to find myself again. I needed to get to a place where I was happy with who I was when I looked in the mirror. Now, my thing about that is, is that if you can get to that place where you say, okay, I'm going to eat right, and I'm going to do these, you know, I'm going to exercise the best I can, 
Y'all, I didn't start exercising until two weeks ago. So don't feel like you have to run out and join a gym, okay? That's not what I'm saying at all. Because the first six months of my journey, I didn't do nothing. Nothing. I went to work or come home. I went to work or come home. That was it. I didn't do any exercise. I didn't go walk. I didn't do much anything. And I, I still lost a great deal of weight. But once I changed that and I changed my mindset, that's when things started really working for me. And that's when I started feeling even better about myself. Do me a favor, and I only see two people on here. The two that are on here, can y'all please um, share this to your timeline? Because I'm not sure where everybody's at. I think everybody's getting tired of hearing the same old thing, and this week it certainly ain't the same old thing. Um, third thing, you need to lower your caffeine. Now, that for me was hard. That for me was very hard. Um, even after I went keto, um, I used to be a Pepsi-holic. And I mean, I drank a lot of Pepsi every day. When I went on keto, I drank only water and I would um, have Diet Dr. Pepper. And then I started drinking BPCs and the coffee. And um, up until just the last few weeks, I had stayed on the coffee pretty hard and the Diet Dr. Pepper, I still have one every once in a while, but my sleep wasn't quite right. I mean, I was getting much better sleep than I ever got before, but I wasn't where I wanted to be. You need to get seven to nine hours of sleep a night, and to me that just sounds crazy because most nights I don't get in bed before midnight, and then I gotta be at work at nine o'clock in the morning, and usually Hannah had to be at work at eight, so I was getting up at six, so I was thinking, you know, six hours, that's fine. But this is coming from a mindset of 15 years of working at a plant where I get four, four and a half hours of sleep and go to work. Never think nothing about it. And that's just the way I functioned for so many years that getting six hours of sleep to me sounded great. Well, through my research and through all the um, podcasts and the, the books that I'm reading, I found that, you know, maybe if I was to get more, a little better sleep and get into a deeper sleep, then I would feel better. So I dropped my caffeine. I only have one BPC a day that is caffeinated, that is real coffee. I am on a live. And after that, everything else is decaffeinated. Um, the four, this all leads into the fourth thing, which is sleep. Now, there's some things that you can do to help with your sleep. Y'all ain't going to like them. <laughs> because they're, they're, they're hard. They're hard to do for people in this day and age. My recommendation, and everything that I've read and researched, points to this. An hour before you want to go to bed, and every night you should be going to bed about the same time. Because setting that sleep schedule is what resets your internal clock, which then helps your brain, which helps to reset everything and get all your healing and your regeneration and your restorative sleep, all that falls into place when you get good restorative sleep, okay? When you get into that deep sleep cycle. Not when you're only sleeping six hours and truthfully those six hours, you're probably in and out of REM 18 to 20 times. And that's the truth, y'all. We think we're getting good sleep, and the truth is we're really not. I learned that um, reading about sleep studies. So here's what they want you to do. An hour before you're going to go to bed. Say, for me, it's going to be 11 o'clock. That's what time I'm planning. So at 10 o'clock, turn off all your electronics. That means your phone, your laptop, your TV, all of it. Tablet. They say, turn them off. Now, this day and age, that's hard to do. Y'all, I'm reading a book right now. Where am I reading that? I'm a Kindle reader. So, I don't have a paperback book. I don't have a, a hard copy. It's you know, on my Kindle. So, I've actually ordered <laughs> hardbacks for all the other books that I'm getting so that I can, I can uh, have real books to read instead of electronic books all the time, which I still have all my stuff on Kindle, too. 
Yeah, there's bugs flying around in my room where we've had the doors open all day long. I've got little moths and little something flying around in here. So excuse that little thing that's flying around my head. Um, all right, so you're going to turn everything off. Then you need to get yourself into a routine that will set you up for sleep that will help your body realize, oh, okay, it's time to start shutting down some systems here. It's time to release that melatonin and allow your body to start getting ready for that restorative sleep. So take a bath, take a shower, read a book, sit down with your kids and play a board game, sit and talk to your kids, go outside and sit on the porch and listen to the crickets. Do something that is just for you for that last hour of your evening. Don't eat anything. Don't drink anything. No electronics. Turn the lights down low. Allow your body to realize and to get itself ready for that restorative sleep because it really does help. I've been doing it this week. It has been super, super hard for me because if y'all could just see this, I have a TV sitting right there. I've got my phone. I've got this laptop. I have a second laptop that I use for work. <coughs> my tablet that lays next to the bed, which is where I read my Kindle books. I usually go to bed and lay in bed and watch and read Kindle. Uh, something in Kindle. And I haven't been doing that. So <laughs> we'll see how it goes. But I do know that the last two nights... I, I've been going to bed at 11 o'clock, and at 11 o'clock, every light in the room is off. It's dark. That means, you know, don't leave your laptop open. Close it. You don't want any of that ambient light. And honestly, y'all, I went to bed at 11 o'clock the last two nights, and I have woke up at around 6.30. No alarm. I've had the alarm set for 7. But I've woke up at about 6.30 both mornings because my body has slept, and it's rested, and it's done what it needed to do. Um, the next thing I'm going to tell you about stress, I have received this week either emails, phone calls, or messages from five different sassy ketonians that have been on this journey now for a couple of weeks or more, and they're concerned because five, I have five right now that are stalled. Okay, and all of them, especially one, I had one that, you know, they're doing everything right. Same thing I was doing in December. They're eating in their macros. They're going to the gym and working out dang near every day. They are active. They're drinking their water. They're doing all these things that they know they're supposed to do. Exactly. That's exactly what you want, Candace. I wish that I did that. Now, I'll be real honest with you. I don't fall asleep as soon as I lay down. But I don't turn over much. I'm pretty much still once I get in there. <laughs> but I think it's because I've just worn myself out. But, um, and they're worried. Well, I need y'all to remember something. Everybody that's on here or that watches this later on the replay... If you are lifting weights, if you are going to the gym, or if you're running every day, or doing the stair climber, or doing these 5Ks and things like that, if you are active and you are building lean muscle, muscle weighs more than fat. That is okay. Y'all watch your body. Pay attention to your body. Get in touch with realizing when things are out of sorts and when things are going great. When you're going to the gym and you're working out and you're building that lean muscle, yeah, the scale may not move. In fact, it may go up a pound or so. That's okay, y'all, if you're building lean muscle. Because the truth is, lean muscle is so much better than fat. It helps with your metabolism. It helps with your heart health. It helps with your blood. Lean muscle is a good thing. But you have to keep in mind, it goes right back to the, what we were talking about earlier about mindset. If you're going to the gym and you're working out or you're doing these things, you have to remember how the body works. And you have to keep in mind, weight loss is the side effect. 
looking good, getting toned up. Y'all, I'm looking forward to it. I don't care if I go up, I don't care if I gain another 10 pounds. I don't care if I go back up 10 pounds. If I start toning up, like in my face, the last couple of weeks, I've noticed I actually, like, yes, I contour when I do my makeup, but I actually have cheekbones. Like some of the pictures that I've posted, I was like, holy poo. Like, I've got real cheekbones. The strings. That's exactly right. That is exactly right, Candace Ramey. Rivera. Sorry. Those strings. If you did what I told you to in the When You're Starting um, program, and you started using the yarn or the strings to measure your hips and your waist and hanging it up, then you can see that difference happening every single month. And that's what you need to be paying attention to. Pay attention to the great things that are happening to your body, not the scale. Um, I have actually told two of the people that contact me, throw your scale out. Give it to your husband, tell him to put it in the back of his truck, behind the behind the seat in his truck, drive off with it, whatever. Don't even get on the scale again for another month. And I know that sounds crazy. When you're on a weight loss journey, it, it involves a scale. Well, no, it doesn't have to. It doesn't have to. It's about the mindset. It's about getting yourself back to that place to where you know that you're doing the right thing for your body. Now, sometimes... You're going to have things happen that don't feel right. Um, if if you buy a meal plan from me, and I want to say this, um, I'm not sure how many people will see it, but if you buy a meal plan from me and you get that meal plan and you stay on it for a week and at the end of that week you're like, mm, I'm not feeling right. Or if you're three days into it and you feel like you've got a lot of inflammation and bloating, call me, message me on Facebook, email me, please. Let me tweak that thing. I'm not going to charge you for... Please. I had one girl, she was like, Well, it was really, I was having a lot of inflammation, and but I didn't want to pay another $15. Y'all, if I gave you a meal plan and it ain't working, you need to let me know. Because I will jump in there and we will figure it out. We will tweak it. We will figure out what's going on. If you paid me for a meal plan, I expect that meal plan to work. Okay? Um... So what I want you to do is I want you to track. If you're working out and you're eating right and you're doing your water and all those good things, track. Track your sleep. Track your water. Track your food. Track your exercise. Okay? And that way, when you do shout out to me and you say, Melissa, I don't know what in the world's going on. Then we can sit down and I can say, okay, do me a favor and take a picture of your journal for the last five days. Or if you're on my fitness pal, I can say, have you friended me on my fitness pal? I want to take a look at your journal for the last five days. That way I can look and I can see what you've been doing and I can say, okay, well, maybe we can do this. Maybe we can tweak that. Looks like you might be getting a little bit too much protein. Um, looks like you're not drinking enough water. Have you checked yourself for dehydration? Do the squeeze. You know, all those things, we can, we can get through it. Uh, my last thing, and then I'll let you guys go and it's gonna be a little bit earlier tonight but um, that's all right is consistency once you start one of these programs you may not have to stay consistent to a certain meal plan let's say um, I love keto the ketogenic way of living is perfect for me it is a perfect fit for me it has changed my life in every way form and fashion if you try keto and you do this for a month and it's not helping you talk to me I'm yes I am a ketogenic coach I am but y'all I have resources lots of them and I have friends that do other ancestral nutrition types of programs that are very knowledgeable and that are at my disposal and I will do whatever I can to help you. Yes, it's called the Sassy Keto Nurse because I am keto. I teach keto. I coach keto. But if you need help in another area, 
I will help you find that because that's what I'm here for. I'm here to help you become your optimal self. That means reaching a place in your health that you feel good about yourself, you feel good about your health, your family feels good about your health, and you feel like a brand new person. That's what I'm here for. And if I can help you do that in any way, whether it's keto or not, I will do my very best. Y'all know how to get in touch with me. Everything is in the description of this video. I will be sharing the video to YouTube and on the channel. Um, Y'all, please reach out if you need me. Reach out if you need help. I do have some exciting things that are about to happen. Um, I am partnering with a couple of my friends that I've known for years. And it's not that, um, I'm definitely not leaving the sassy keto nurse. This is my, this is my baby right here. This is what I'm going to do. But we are collaborating to assist each other to open up some avenues to reach a bigger audience, to be able to reach those that may not find me on Facebook. Um, this group is mostly local folks or people that I've that know me personally, and I'm wanting to reach out because I want to help as many people as I possibly can. Before I go tonight, I want to make an announcement. Um, I'm not mentioning any names, but in the seven weeks since the Sassy Keto Nurse started up, since I started doing this group, I have had, y'all, I'm going to cry. I have had 29 people start the program that have contacted me and told me they started the program. Out of those 29 people, more than half of those people lost almost right at 10 or more pounds in their first week. I have six right now that have been on the program for almost a month that have lost over 30 pounds. Y'all, this is, I've got... I've got three that have contacted me that have went and had their blood work done, that have gone to their doctor and said, you know, I'm doing this, you know, and their doctors ain't happy about it, but they told them and, you know, they got their blood work done and three, three that are having their medications dropped already. Do y'all know how big that is? Do you understand how huge that is? For me, that is the whole purpose of this entire thing. I just want people to get healthy. I just want people to be happy. So, have a great week. We're starting out a new one. Tomorrow's meal prep day. We'll see if I put anything on the on the page about my meal prep tomorrow. Tonight, we had excellent dinner at my house. Um, Walmart now has prime rib patties. Prime rib patties patties like in hamburger patty form prime rib one patty 30 grams of fat y'all I was having myself a little moment in the Walmart not gonna play um, it does it is very high in protein it has 26 grams of protein zero carbs brought them home for the kids, they had buns and all their junk that they put on their burgers and such. And they had tater tots. For me, I fixed myself um, a prime rib patty. I cooked it in just a little bit of bacon grease just so it wouldn't stick to the cast iron skillet. And I seasoned it with some seasoning that I got from... Um, a local vendor that does barbecue and I had him mix me up a thing of his seasoning without sugar because it's just delicious and I paid out the butt for it but I'm okay with it because it is delicious seasoning and he gave me a whole pint jar of it so I seasoned it with that and then I put provolone cheese on it y'all it was so 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 good 
and then I had broccoli and cauliflower, steamed broccoli and cauliflower with just a gum of butter and some salt on it, and it was delicious. So that was my dinner. All right, guys, it is 8.45. I love y'all. For y'all that are watching on the replay, please pay attention to all this stuff. Just because you're not losing a pound right now does not mean that you're not succeeding in your journey. If you need me, reach out. All of my contact information is on the page, and it's also at the top of this video. God bless you. Have a wonderful week, and I can't wait to see you again. For those of y'all that want to join us on Monday nights, we do the, um, the book review. This week we'll be reviewing chapters 7, 8, 9, I think. But we will be starting at 7.30 on Monday nights because I have to pick my kids up from school at 9. So 7.30 to 8.30 on Monday nights. And y'all, if there's a better time for this live, if y'all would rather do it early in the day or on Sunday or something to where everybody can get on here, please let me know that. Please. Because this having one or two on here, is, it's not conducive to a great discussion. I can talk to myself all day long. <laughs> all right. Love y'all. Sassy Keto Nurse. Out.